Hello and welcome to another video on what is Shopify. So over the couple past year, what I have done is to look at the these particular blocks and talk about what is Shopify, which is a complete e-commerce solution that has strapped a lot of the commerce operations. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> that has a lot of the commerce operations such as product management, inventory management, payments, uh, processors, as well as shipping, and especially, which, I think, which is something useful for merchants, uh, you don't have to handle uh, the software and the hardware by your own. So all of that is being taken care from you. And once you buy a Shopify plan, we can think of it as a set of layers, right? So the layer one is the Shopify products and service. So once you buy a Shopify plan, you can have access to personalize your online store. It also provides selling tools to sell on multiple sales channels, whether it's on digital marketplace or social media, or uh, in multiple place, such as the web, the mobile, in-person, brick and mortar locations, pop-up shops. Also, it allows you this integrated payment system. <clears throat> <clears throat> Sorry. It comes with this integrated payment system, okay? Uh, as well as a great, fast, reliable, and secure checkout for your customers in, in SEO and marketing tools so you can gain insight of how your users are interacting with your online store. And if you want to fine tune more your online store, you can do that <clears throat> uh, by relying on the Shopify API and DevTools. Okay, so then once your business starts to grow as well as your needs, then the second layer, which is the additional products and service on Shopify, is, for example, they provide you balance uh, to keep track of all of your trans financial transactions, as well as you can receive funds. So Shopify now is acting as, as one of these financial institutions for thousands or even millions of merchants, okay? Uh, so that's one of the games they play in that. And if you want to uh, now uh, solve more complex issues, especially as you started to grow, you can rely on apps built by third-party developers, so trust-party developers, uh, that you can go to the Shopify app store, much like Google with the Play Store or uh, Apple with the uh, <clears throat> Apple Store. So Shopify has it all marketplace. Great. If you need, for example, rely on a Shopify expert to do that, uh, to help you tackle more of your business goals, you can do that. So that's great because uh, the whole point of this is to understand what is Shopify and then the reason why you can go with Shopify uh, from their blog, which is it expands over 175 countries. However, when it comes to uh, Shopify payments, it's way more or less than that. Okay, as well as it has an entire community of entrepreneurs. Uh, they have a, a large community of entrepreneurs uh, that is supported by Shopify and where you can find is merchants, developers, and partners. Uh, it also comes with one of the most integrated commerce solutions out there, as well as it absorbs an necessary complexity especially when you want to grow your business and scale, okay? Not only 
on not only abstract things from the, the commerce operation, something that I mentioned before, but also from the technical aspect when it comes to uh, install, when it comes to design, implement, install, and maintain software as well as hardware, uh, and when it comes to grow your business. So, okay, Shopify, after all, they charge per transaction and a monthly fee. Okay, so with that understanding, then I want to know is more about the features that they provide. So, uh, it can be seen as from the merchants, the consumers, or the customers, as well as uh, from the business perspective. So, first, I look at the uh, Shopify features for all for merchants where here you have things like uh, create a custom storefront which is it allows you to find new ways to sell that they like your customers boost sales build loyalty by customizing your storefront and it's important to recognize something called touch point which are point of interaction with your brand unlike sales channels okay which are plain planned point of interaction so these touch points are some is important to mention uh in interaction dash design described that uh, you have the web the mobile products marketing print other service uh, as well as people so all of this point of interaction is important because at least to know because storefront they allow you to integrate commerce to your mobile application which is one of the touch points or inject shopping or shoppable moment in your game uh, when you're already engaged audience it exists as well as custom, store, uh, or custom sales channel so you can now have full control of full creative control of the entire buyer buying experience so buying experience like car dealerships cafes and restaurants online retailers uh, online shopping uh, or in-store retail travel booking uh, grocery shopping all that kind of thing so this is one feature and i also look at something called uh, sales and sales uh, channels uh, which after all it allows you to promote and sell your products, whether it's physical or digital, across different uh, uh, channels, whether it's social media, so where you can uh, turn followers into customers, so where you can find new customers, grow your audience, or grow your branch audience, and build customer loyalty, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, Facebook, or TikTok, or uh, in the digital marketplace. So sell where people search, so for example, Google, or put your brand in one of the largest, allegedly largest retail, such as Walmart, okay? Then another feature is the shop app. With this, the TLDR, is uh, a shop a digital shop assistant which is a wrapper of the shopify database using chat gpt to rediscover business while finding and buying their products so this is shop app and recently now i'm looking at the pos and retail so POS allows you to sell in person, uh, back with the data that you need to sell online, and with the Shopify 
uh, all in POS system, it provide customer uh, with frictionless shopping experience, manage staff, important, manage staff, track inventory and more. So this POS, unlike cash register, where they only uh, allow you to count and print receipts, this POS includes automatic inventory when selling products, real-time report, which is something powerful, staff management, or, or manage, yeah, staff management, uh, a customer library with loyalty features. So I just want to know a little bit the history of the POS because to me this is something new and it all start it all start uh, after the American Civil War, the North American Civil War, uh, in the late 1880s. Uh, and most shop owners have to hire strange to assist customers, and this hires. Uh, it was very easy for them to pocket money from customers. So it all started or it all changed when James Reedy from Dayton, Ohio, invented the first mechanical cash register. They recorded it as the incorruptible mechanical cash register. Where in there, okay. Well, in there, uh, he have to. Uh, he went. Uh, out of, he ran out of business, uh, and he sell then that patent to, uh, which is something that is here. So overwhelmed with the responsibility of running to business and preferring the saloon life, really sold the company to Jacob H. Ecker, who renamed the National Manufacturing Company. So according also to the, um, I didn't put the source here. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Um, hmm. Okay. National Museum, Museum of American History is this. Yeah, according to the National uh, Museum of American History, okay, so really were out of business, but their patents were purchased by the National Cash Register, something very, very important to understand here, okay, so by 1884, the Reedys were out of business, the Reedys brothers were out of business, but their patents were purchased by the National Cash Register company. And NCR made and sold much improved cash register, and by and by 1804 they were ready to convey the history of the, of their company by showing this model at the San Luis World's Fair. So allegedly, this is an image of this replica. Okay. They mentioned here we did model one cash register, possibly a replica. Okay, uh, but James Reedy and his brother, so they in, they were the first to invent this first mechanical cash register because they were facing a problem, and that was because they were hiring a lot of these strangers, uh, and it is and this is something important to to recognize, right? Because they were hiring this a lot of strangers that. For them, it was very easy to pocket money from customers. Okay, uh, so what with what he tried to do is to uh, prevent that behavior and to improve in his business, which is something that now business will go into that, right? So the so business wants to be business out of line to the capitalist, of course. But business wants you to be efficient and effective with your time. And since we're living in a moment that we are 
more aware of that, this is crucial for us to pondering about it and understand that, yes, your time is valuable. And especially if you're going to work for a company, whatever, whatever it is, whatever it is, you know, especially if you're going to work for a company, be efficient and effective with your time. So this is what I'm going to do. Once you finish, dedicate time to other things that you know that you need to, must, and have to. This is my uh, experience. This is my recommendation, you know? Okay. Uh, because after, at the end of the day, the vast majority of these organizations and companies will be going to automate a lot of this process, not only to remove people, because the whole idea is not to remove people. The whole idea is to be in, uh, or playing here, they will advocate here with them, is to improve areas in which we can have much more free time. So, for example, the washing machine, it saves you huge amount of time, my friend. <laughs> you know, it saves you huge amount of time. So, back in the old days, the women were on the river, that, and they spent two days on that, all right? But now you can only spend an hour of that, you know. Uh, and from there, you can gain traction to do anything else. Or, or, for example, here, recording this video to learn more about the history of the POS. So, this is the whole idea here. Okay. But that's great. That's, that's awesome, by the way. Um, uh, and yeah. Yeah, uh, so this is to understand about the POS, okay? So POS, after all, there are systems that is, uh, there are systems used to process transactions and accept payments in person, okay? So this POS, it allows you to sell in person uh, while providing the customer frictionally shopping experience, especially when you scan the QR code, right? So it provides this, provide uh, a customer frictionless experience. So we provide this frictionless customer experience, frictionless customer shopping experience, okay? I'll, and also allow you to manage staff, track inventory, generate reports, uh, generate real-time reports, uh, as well as have a customer library with loyalty features. So, okay, interesting, interesting. As well as this, this is interesting that James Reedy, uh, once uh, he ran out of business, okay, Okay, so Reedis, uh, the, the Reedis brother went out of business according to the National American Museum, National Museum of American History. Okay, uh, so it's like that. And so the Reedis, <sighs> sorry, uh, so the Reedis were out of business like that. Okay, so the British were out of business, but they sell their patent to the National Cash Register, now known as the NCR. Okay, and they were not only went to uh, make cash register and accounting machines, but also electronic computers. And as any aspect of life, everything uh, like business, it evolves. Okay, so that'll be all for this video. Take care. Bye-bye.